Welcome back, everyone. Another week of Taurus Tech Talk here at the SG Taurus Company. I'm your host, Matt LePan. Once again, we're joined by Ken Gott. And once again, we're talking Kumo Cloud, Kumo Station. Ken, welcome back. Another Kumo Talk with you. Thanks for having me back, Matt. Today, we're going to be talking advanced settings on Kumo Cloud and Kumo Station. We've gone over pretty much everything you need to know to get these things on the wall, get them up and operational. Now we want to get to the nitty gritty of really customizing your system with Kumo Cloud, Kumo Station once you have everything installed. Okay, Matt, we'll start off with the advanced settings in our indoor units. When you have your Kumo Cloud app installed and everything operating, to get into the advanced settings, very simply, you go into your settings, you go into your system setup, installer settings, type in your code, your 9999, installer login, and then what you can do is you can select your indoor units. I'm going to start off with, let's see, a wall unit. That's probably the simplest one. So you select your wall unit down the bottom of the screen. You can hit advanced and you can see some options that come up. There isn't an awful lot on the wall unit that you can change. You can adjust your minimum cooling set point so the customer or can't lower it but below a certain temperature. Right now, my mindset for a minimum cooling set point of 68 degrees, so no one can set it lower than that. You can go higher or lower. Your next set point is your maximum heating set point. Right now, mine set at 78. That's a little high. You can there's several options there. I can lower it down to maybe 74 degrees. Select it. The next thing you have is your thermal off. For your fan that will shut your fan off when you reach temperature whether it's in cooling or heating you can select the fan also to go into an ultra low speed if you like or you can have it the fan shut off when it reaches the thermal temperature selected if you had a preference there would you say it's better to run the fan at the low setting or just turn the fan all the way off when you reach temperature It's really a customer preference. We do get a lot of complaints sometimes when the fans go to the ultra low speed and there's no call for heating or cooling. Some customers can say it's drafty. It's always best to leave the fan running so you have a more even temperature in in a room. But again, that's customer preference. The other things you can select is the system type, which in most cases we have heat pumps today so it's cooling and heating you do the selection of cooling only which would just limit someone to only run it in cooling I'm not sure why anyone would want to do that but it gives you that option then it also gives you the selection of uh, dehumidify what dehumidify does is it just runs the unit in cooling slows the fan down a little bit for better dehumidification gives you that option of making it available on the Kumo cloud app or not And on the wall unit, that's pretty much all the settings you have. As we get into other units, you'll see more or less options available. It's really dependent upon the type of indoor unit you're using. I will go to a four-way unit. That's the ceiling recess cassette with the four-way blow. Go into advanced settings on that. Again, you have the minimum cooling set point, heating set point, thermal off for the fan, cooling and heating, dehumidify, This one actually gives you the restart after a power outage. We always select yes. You could select no for whatever reason, but we're gonna leave it at yes. Gives you the same options. You can have the unit cooling and heating or cooling only. This one gives you filter alerts too. You can have alert after 100 hours or 2,500 hours or never. On this four-way cassette, it also, and it, you can also control the veins on it, whether or not you want them to oscillate or not. That's another setting in there as well. That's pretty much all the settings on our four-way cassette model. The next uh, unit I'll go over is our ducted unit. So if you go and select a ducted unit, go into advanced, you're going to see a few more settings. Again, the standard ones, the minimum cooling set point, maximum heating set point, your thermal off for the fan. One thing that's really important here is static pressure. You select static pressure, you hit set airflow, you enter the model that you have, and then you're going to get the question whether it's a vertical unit, horizontal left or right, or downflow position. This affects the static pressure in the unit. So I'm going to select vertical. It gives you the choice of 0.3 inches of water column, 0.5 inches of water column, or 0.8 inches of water column, according to what your ductwork needs are. That's pretty important to select that in a ducted unit. Going back, it also gives you the option is an electric heater kit installed. It gives you several modes to select, comfort mode, economy mode, or basic single stage mode. That would be according to how many stages of electric heat you have in your ducted air handler. All the other options are pretty much the same. It does give you the 
selection of de dehumidify mode, heating offsets, filter alerts, and that is pretty much it for the ducted unit. Ken, we've covered the advanced settings for different Kumo Cloud wireless interface units. There's also some advanced settings for the Kumo Station. Can we go over those as well? Certainly. On the Kumo Station, originally when you set it up, you set up you know, for either backup wet heat, baseboard heat, humidification, dehumidification, or air ventilation. To get into your advanced settings in your Kumo Station, you want to go into your installer settings, go into your advanced settings, and at that point, you will see a list of your installed options on your Kumo Station. At the very top, you'll see the outside air temperature being displayed. On my Kumo Station, I have a wireless wall sensor that shows up. If you were to select that, it's basically just going to allow you to read it. It tells you the battery life percentage. Mine's at 91%. It displays which unit it's on. Mine's on my wall unit. That's about all you can view in that. And then my first option is my heater number one. If you select that, basically it tells you what it's backing up, which is my wall unit. It allows you to change the temperature when it backs up the outside air temperature. It gives you minus 10 all the way up to 45 degrees. And you can change that if your customer needs have changed and they want unit to operate differently. It also gives you a time delay. I had set mine for a short amount of time, which was five minutes just for demonstration purposes, but typically you probably would want to set that delay for at least 30 minutes, possibly more. And it also gives you the option, this is on, of course, the backup heat of when you want only the heat pump to run. That's selectable, again, from minus 10 all the way up to 60 degrees. If you wanted the heat pump to run, you might select 32 degrees and above, depending on your installation, which could vary from job to job. I have another backup heater on my ducted unit. Again, all the advanced options are the same. Outside air temperature, time delay, and the temperature you want only the heat pump to run. When you go into another option, I have ventilation. You select that, that basically gives you how long you want the ERV or backup air unit to run. You have the option of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes, and you can select on how many minutes out of the hour you want that to run. You can set it for 24 hours, or you can put in a time schedule if you want the unit to run on a, basically a time clock type operation. That's the options for ventilation. I have humidification set up as well. If you select humidifier, it basically allows you to set the percentage of humidity you want to set, 30% all the way up to 70%, which is a bit extreme. And again, you just turn humidifier on or off. The other option you would have if you have a dehumidification set as well, that gives you the option of setting the humidity set point and how long you want the unit to run. And that's probably about it for the Kumo station advanced option setups. Great. Well, thank you, Ken. And now we've set everything up, we've got everything running, we've set our advanced settings. Pretty much everything should be running at an optimal level at this point, but as always there's going to be changes, there's going to be updates to Kumo Cloud, Kumo Station. Make sure you're checking back with us and you should already be signed up with us at our Kumo page if you're not, sgtaurus.com backslash Kumo. Sign up for the mailing list, you get all these updates whenever they come out. You'll get new podcasts, you'll get product information, all that stuff right in your inbox. I want to thank Ken again for coming on talking advanced settings on Kumo Cloud, Kumo Station. I want to thank everyone out there for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Apple Music, Google Play, Spotify, anywhere you can find a podcast, you'll be able to find us by searching Taurus Tech Talk. Make sure to follow along on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Use the hashtag Taurus Tech Talk. And as always, you can catch all of our podcasts on our website, sgtaurus.com backslash podcasts. I want to thank you again for tuning in. We'll catch you next week on Taurus Tech Talk.